I got to tell you, it's a real pleasure being up here today telling our story, which I think is, is a great story. Um, two and a half years ago, we started a migration of our most critical systems to AWS. It's our market surveillance platform. Our center of gravity is now in AWS for our organization. 90% of our total data volume is in AWS. And yes, we started with the crown jewels. We've had amazing benefits in this journey. It exceeded all the expectations that we had set out for us, and we learned a lot, and we transformed our IT culture in doing so. So we're um, FINRA, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. We're a Wall Street regulator. Our mission is to protect investors by making sure that markets operate fairly and honestly and that there's no market manipulation occurring. How do we do this? We use advanced technology and we collect a massive amount of data from the industry. All the exchanges and all the financial services firms that do securities trading send us all the orders, quotes, and trades that occur every day. It's a massive amount of data in that it's, it peaks at 75 billion records coming into FINRA each day. We process every day what Visa and MasterCard process over six months. And what we do is we stitch all this data together and look at it over days, weeks, and months. Now we're talking trillions of records, over 20 petabytes. And we run complex, sophisticated surveillance queries against that data to look for suspicious activity. That's what we do. Now, how did we start our journey to AWS? Well, there was a flash crash a few years ago, a very unpleasant event in the markets. And as a result of that, the Securities and Exchange Commission proposed a new regulatory mandate to better surveil the markets. For one thing, it was very difficult to diagnose what happened, you know, wh whether it was algorithms, trading algorithms going awry or whatever. So the new regulatory mandate actually is going to ask for even more data, a more comprehensive look at, at the market, if you can imagine. Much more data. Bloomberg, when they talk about it, says it's going to be the biggest database ever built. And so we looked at how we're we going to build this thing. And we looked at our current platform, which, as you can imagine, data warehouse appliances, which worked reasonably well to get us to the point where we were. But then when we look at the real challenge forward with the amount of data that we needed to collect, we very quickly determined that we needed something different. And so that's when we began in, in 2013 looking at public cloud solution with open source big data. That, that's really where we wanted to take this thing. So we, had, we looked at all the cloud providers. We had big data experts. I had uh, very, uh, most, one of the most senior executives at the largest technology company telling us that this doesn't belong in the cloud. It's not going to work. Um, so we basically, through a combination of proof of concepts and a lot of analysis with the best and brightest employees at FINRA looking at this. By the end of 2013, we came up with a proposal and a model supported by performance uh, modeling and proof of concepts on what this thing could look like architecturally. And so we said, let's go do it. Let's go build it now. And that's why wait for the SEC to make the final decision uh, and working with the industry on when this thing is going to launch? We could use this architecture for our current surveillance platform and database. For all the obvious reasons that we're here for today, to reduce the cost, to get rid of the proprietary infrastructure, and to leverage massive processing and storage scale on demand and at commodity costs. So that's what we did. So beginning in 2014, we began building this new system and started cutting over in uh, mid-2014, and we completed the project in full uh, this past July. Our approach, very unconventional. As a Wall Street regulator, 
We operate in an environment that is conservative. There's a need for control, very cautious, particularly around cybersecurity. We moved our most mission critical data intensive systems first, very bold. We had four principles that defined our strategic approach. The first one was self sufficiency. We wanted to do this ourselves, didn't want to rely on vendors. In fact, we had vendors, cloud brokers coming in one after another. And we very quickly, within a few months, got to the point where our skills were more uh, profound than those of most of the vendors that we were talking in the, in the market. Next principle was public versus private cloud. A lot of talk about private cloud, particularly in the financial services industry. Again, that need for control. Our view is why own, manage, and support all that commodity hardware why not be mark to market with Moore's Law? And furthermore, we find that private cloud is often pushed by infrastructure people who want to stay within their comfort zone. And yes, they may be buyers of the cloud concept, but want to do it internally, again, for that control. Another principle was open source. We wanted to use open source database product, products like HBase and Hive. We had streams of proprietary database vendors coming in one after another telling it it wouldn't scale, it wasn't mature, it won't work. They've all been wrong. We've proven them all wrong. And then the last key principle is that we weren't going to do a lift and shift. What we wanted to do instead was a ground up rewrite of our applications in the cloud to take advantage of the cloud model. It's what we call cloud done right. DevOps automation and cybersecurity protections built in from the ground up. That's what we did. Now with AWS, we've got a great partnership with them. Uh, we, in the uh, beginning, we looked at all the major cloud providers and we continue to do so today. And we've determined over and over again, that AWS is several years ahead of the closest competitor. And in fact, that gap is increasing, if you can imagine that. Um, our scope now expands a very wide breadth of AWS products. And it's allowed us to achieve the freedom from the proprietary database vendors that were warning us. In fact, in uh, HBase, we have, we're up to 2 trillion rows in HBase today. And that, we expect that number to grow phenomenally. So, the expertise that we've built is, is very profound. We've got seven FINRA experts who are going to be speaking here uh, at this conference this week. So what's next for us? We want to move the balance of our applications to AWS. These are stragglers. Again, we've got the center of gravity in AWS today. But we want to move the rest, and they're likely going to be rewrites and re-architects, again, to achieve that DevOps optimization and automation. We're going to close our data centers, as you would expect, and we look forward, as Andy just announced, to achieve true database freedom from Oracle with AWS Aurora. The project met our expectations. In many regards, it exceeded them, and we got some huge pleasant surprises out of this that we weren't expecting at all. First of, of those, which, which we saw immediately when we started putting this in production in mid-2014, is amazing performance improvements. On average, 400 times improvement to interactive queries. The investigative capacity of our surveillance teams has expanded dramatically. It's, it's like being able to research something and only being able to do a few Google searches a day. It's impossible. Now we can do these things in seconds and subseconds. And we're able to absorb market peaks like the Brexit in June without even having any operational challenge whatsoever. In fact, in, in many cases, we hit peaks where we're uh, using tens of thousands of nodes momentarily and then taking it all down in EMR and able to handle the volatile peaks that happen in the marketplace without generally even being aware of it until after it happens and we review the logs. 
Back in 2015, about a year, year and a half ago, uh, we determined, as, a, as many of us have, that cybersecurity is better in the cloud than it is in privately managed data centers for a lot of good reasons that I won't get into. You know, and that, and that bucked a lot of conventional wisdom, which wasn't helped by tabloid headlines saying that, surprise, surprise, Hillary backed up her email in the cloud. Um, resiliency. This is a more recent um, observation on our part. Having been CIO of two stock exchanges, including, including NASDAQ, and having been the CIO of Citibank, a lot of time spent on resiliency and disaster recovery. Given that our data is replicated and processed ubiquitously and virtually across tens of data centers, the whole model of our, um, resiliency and disaster recovery is, is changed. And with the public cloud computing done right, uh, the resiliency, you just can't compare it to what you would have in a private data center. And the last thing I'll say is that we've been very loud in the press and at conferences about our cloud efforts and our success, and we've attracted a lot of attention. We have dozens of companies, big banks, other regulators, financial services firms, coming in to learn from us and our experience. And we've now taken this to the point where we've got commercial relationships with a number of firms to provide that assistance. So I'm really proud of my team in accomplishing this. It's just been an amazing effort. We did it ourselves with the partnership with AWS. And I'm um, happy, delighted to share that story with you today. Thank you.